Hebrews chapter 5. Are you there in chapter 5? Are you there? All right, let's begin from verse 12. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Now become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. If we understand what this scripture is saying, it means that there are two aspects of the word of God. There's an aspect of the word of God that has to do with an infant believer that needs nutrients in order for, for him or her to find the stature first to live effectively the Christian life and ultimately to have stature to prosecute his calling or his purpose in life. That is the first aspect. The Bible talks about strong meat. Verse 13, are you with me? For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Now the Bible says that just in case your Christian life is lived on the basis of the kind of support that you need to keep on going, there is your life support. Because no one drinks milk to maturity. Even though you still drink milk, but you don't depend on it. But my little baby depends on milk. It is legitimate for my little baby to cry out for milk. But the Bible is saying that if you are still a believer that depends on milk, you are not yet exposed to strong meat. But the Bible says that if you still use milk, you are unskillful in the word of righteousness. So according to this scripture, the message of righteousness it's the message called strong meat. Are you here? I say, are you here? Uh, milk exposes a believer to the potential that is captured in our current operating system, which is the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. When you take milk, you are receiving insight that will energize you to access our resource base so that you will discover that what requires what you require for life for ministry for godliness is all fully funded in the grace of god but for mature people that understand the message of the word of righteousness they are concerned about how god views their labels are you with me now righteousness in this context is not the righteousness that is imputed to us on the account of the fact that we were brought into the presence of the judge and the judge, by justification, declared us righteous. Even though the Bible reveals that we are saved by grace, every believer is going to be judged by righteousness revealed through his works. Are you with me? You are not going to be judged by grace, you'll be judged by righteousness that is revealed in your works. So the message of righteousness in this context is the message of our accountability to God. Since, since ultimately God is going to judge us, people that have become mature live their lives in a state that they are perpetually accountable to God. They, after preaching, maybe people might clap for you, clap for you, clap for you, but if you are mature, you will go to God and ask for your scorecard because ultimately you are going to be accountable to him. That kind of orientation and the message that prepares your heart for daily accountability so that when ultimately you stand before God, you will not be ashamed. Are you with me? That message is a message for the mature. Isaiah had a problem. Isaiah discovered that he was a man of unclean lips. Meanwhile, he was prophesying. And his prophecies were damnations. He looked at this city and said, Woe unto all of you. Woe. Look here, he'll say, Woe unto your fathers. Until he had an encounter with God. That was when he discovered his own state. Guess who the last person he said woe to was who? Himself. Because unknown to him, the environment in which he found himself was filthy. And that filthy environment had recalibrated him. And he didn't know that he was far away from God's standard, even though he was doing ministry. Until he had a revelation of God's holiness. In the book of Isaiah, um, Isaiah chapter 6, it was the revelation of God's holiness that unveiled his own state. You can be walking in the provisions of God, but you may not know your state before God. Are you, are you here with me? 
And the preacher of this morning is giving us a recommendation that if we really understand the matter that is on ground and we are given an opportunity to meet face to face with God, our understanding of the matter on ground is going to influence what we ask. And all true sons and daughters of God that understand the context of our participation, if you understand though, you will ask for living water. I want to rest my case. There was a preacher. Once upon a time, a preacher in Nigeria. He became so powerful that he was so revered among Christians in this nation. But he didn't know that he was experiencing corruption. Because if you are the one, um, can you put your Bible on your eyes? Put it on your eyes, let's see. Just very close to your eyes. No, go, go closer, go closer. Can you read it? You will need to take it backward before you can read what is on the pages. That means you can see people's faults easily. But it is very difficult for you to see yours because your life is on your face. And meanwhile, people, you have a range to be able to see others. A great man that rose in our midst in this nation, mighty teacher of faith. In my own opinion, no Nigerian ever taught faith like that man. Once upon a time, I saw this same man on Facebook in a 40 minutes lecture trying to justify how masturbation is not a sin. And he was doing it with all the anointing, all the beauty that he has. I saw another edition of that teaching recently. Our preacher for this morning is saying, if we have access to living water, it takes care. Sometimes, in order for you to be well, you need to purge. May the Lord, <laughs> may the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. How did this great teacher of faith experience such corruption? A 40 minutes apologetics teaching to convince the body of Christ how that masturbation is self-service. You are doing it by yourself, with yourself, all alone. How does that amount to sin? What if I take an idol and I'm worshipping an idol alone? I'm not worshipping for you. I'm not trying to kill you. I'm not pursuing you. It's just me and my idol. And I kneel down before the idol. What you are not aware of, and maybe some of you that experienced masturbation before you broke free, only such people will know that it's an unclean spirit for a preacher of that standing to come in to condescend to that state, um, we need living water. That kind of a thing is possible when we are no longer partakers of the word of righteousness. We no longer believe that there's an accountability framework that is built into our pursuit, our pilgrimage in this life. When you forget every form of accountability that is part of our reality on this journey, you can end up trying to justify masturbation in public sight. Meanwhile, what was on display that day was that corruption is not obvious in the eyes of the afflicted. But Jesus said, if you had known the gift of God and him who is addressing you now, you would have taken full advantage of this opportunity to make a request for living water. Living water as the name implies, we do damage to anything that can corrupt, anything that can make a lie, anything that can defile, anything that can kill. Can we pray this morning? You know my prayer yesterday night. Lord, I see that you are making me a voice. Can you, can you guarantee that I will not start fighting you tomorrow? If you don't think that way, it means that you are only seen from one perspective. You are not seen from the perspective of accountability. That every ounce of grace that you squander makes you indebted to the spirit of Christ. And because of that grace that was given to you to administer, to bring purpose, profit to the kingdom of God, you may need to stand before God to account for it. And the moment we forget that, we throw caution to the wind. And the agenda of the devil to corrupt us will prosper. Jesus is saying, if you have fully evaluated the importance and the privilege that I have given unto you, you will not waste it by shouting, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You will, you will gather yourself together and you will ask me, for what? Can we ask him deliberately today so you can rise on your feet? Let us ask him. Let us ask him for living water. It will keep you from corruption. Let us ask him for living water. It will keep you from death. It will keep you from spiritual ailments that will defile you. A preacher takes off like a tornado and then, are you still with me? You are not with me? Okay. A mighty preacher. This man I'm talking about raised nine dead men. He was a, a king of fasting. He lives on, on the mountain. 
And when he comes from the mountain top and they bring mad people in chains, he breaks the madness. He was even sick, but we are on the mountain. Strange man in the anointing. Such a man that will come for a burial and ask God, who killed this one? Is it you? How did he die? And if God says he's not responsible, his time has not come. That, he, has, he has turned around many barriers. He has turned around many barriers. This is the man I'm talking about. This man became crippled. And before he died, he revealed why he was crippled. So the last, last person's wife he slept with was number 16. Are you, are you with me? Did you hear me very well? He said the last adultery he committed was the 16th woman. He didn't say he slept with them just one time. The 16th girlfriend that he was sexually active with in his last escapade was the 16th woman. Jesus said, if you, if you have known the gift of God. So is it that he suddenly became ignorant of God? There are forces of corruption seeking to master your heart. And Satan is hoping to gain, get profit from your life. That all of your visibility, when you shine and the whole world sees you, because of the seed he has sown, he will get a harvest from your life. But Jesus said, if thou hast known, what? Gift of God. Hallelujah. Let me speak in parables. Once upon a time, I don't know how I would say that you will not know. Once upon a time, I, I was supposed to be giving something. Hmm? Something in the U.S. And because of the nature of the thing I was supposed to be giving, it's still on. The process is still on. Because of that, they had to investigate me. But me, I didn't know that they investigated me. It was after the investigation, and I came out clean. Then I informed me that, for your information, we have investigated you, you are clean. And just in case you are surprised, we investigated about 12 top preachers in your country, and they are dirty. How, how does a minister that carries light, that's the question you will ask, how does he end up there if he forgets the word of righteousness? That the end of his journey is going to, is going to land him on a table of accountability. If you know that, there is a caution that you have and you present yourself before God regularly for examination. Are you with me? Because if you stop doing that, it doesn't matter the kind of grace you carry. Corruption will, will lock on your soul and the devil will have a harvest from all of your rising. Jesus said, if, you, if thou had known the gift of God, can we ask him of, for living water? <laughs> when we see men like Bonke that lived like a cherubim, no stain, no spot. There were people that presented themselves to God regularly for assessment. Give me living water. Let this living water neutralize the seed of any form of corruption that is at work on my soul at the moment. Let it do damage to any fear, any open door of corruption that has found access to my soul. It is a man that understands the message of accountability that will be concerned that there is wickedness that is locking upon his heart. It is a man that is concerned that there is accountability in this our pilgrimage that will be concerned that the spirit of lust has taken over his consciousness. Satan wants to have a harvest. A harvest from your life. A harvest from my life. But if thou had known the gift that is of God and he that speaks unto you, you will have asked me of living water. Mi aso se la brasketo mi nakate balato. Resiko panteli. Jamato sketo preko bakabosa. Ibra maseko tombe la hika tale bokoto. Embro kisko se salito. Brakabonte seke balata mi nakadia. Abrasketo mi nakura bateto lea. Isko preke batamo seli. As 
Jesus came up for living water. in jesus mighty name i pray it every night let my life not occasion any harvest for satan every night let me not suddenly have a soft spot for iniquity the living water is designed to purge you your vessel to purge you from any seed that has the potential to bring corruption into your life the lord hears our voice tonight and he will have he will have mercy in the name of jesus